This is Tokyo Real. I'm Ian Simpson. I'm with me on the show again today for the second time, I believe. We have Kevin McNamara. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you very much, Ian. Great to be here. Thanks. And just to remind our viewers, you are the founder of the online platform uh, Chimeric Heels, uh, Get Out of Your Comfort Zone, and you're a high performance coach, life coach, um, amongst other things that you're involved yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Great. And we're going to get into uh, talking um, a lot about that later. But uh, today, I'd like to kick it off with a topic that I, I think is really, really important, especially for the guys that are watching this. Um, and I'd like to talk about uh, male prostate gland and prostate problems, which is particularly relevant for you, because I know you've had prostate problems. I have prostate problems. And in fact, 50% of guys over 50 have prostate problems. So I think it might be a, an interesting conversation and, and hopefully um, enlightening and learning for, for, for people, mm. yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if I can just, uh, um, I'll refer to my notes because I want to get it right, just to outline to people what the prostate gland is. It's the male reproductive organ whose main function is to secrete prostate fluid, one of the components of semen. The muscles of the prostate gland also help to propel semen into the urethra during ejaculation. It surrounds the urethra, just positioned just beneath the bladder, which can be a problem which we can talk about later. So for us guys, it's a really important gland, a really important organ, yeah? Uh, it is, and um, interestingly, it's actually shaped like a Brazil nut. Right. And again, interestingly, Brazil nuts are very good for the prostate. They yes. contain a lot of uh, zinc and uh, they're really helpful. So it's uh, there's a guy named Don Tolman who I'm a big fan of, and he talks about the food signatures. Mm. And he talks about the prostate and it is shaped like a, um, a Brazil nut, basically. And there's other things like he talks about tomatoes that are really good for your heart and they've got sort of the eight chambers inside. Um, really interesting guy. And uh, But yeah, the prostate is a very important uh, part of a man's anatomy, basically. Yes. And you have to sort of look after it. And as you, as you get older, certainly, uh, it does tend to cause a few problems, that's for sure. Yeah, well... That's that. That was my, sort of my next question: is how do how do we know if we have a problem? Because I I was fifty, and um, I mean I my background is in sports science, and I know quite a lot about me medicine and stuff um, on a basic level. But even call me naive or stupid or whatever. But when I was in my fifties, I I wasn't really aware that. Um, the problems I was, I was having were related to prostate, which sort of makes me think there must be a lot of other guys out there who, who are having problems and haven't clicked yet that this could be something I need to get checked out. So um, I don't know if the sim similar your story was similar, but how did it all start? Uh, how did you become aware of this might be a prostate problem? Yeah, well... Um like yourself, I didn't know a lot about um, the prostate at all, uh, and I guess for me, I was, I think I was around 52, 53, somewhere around there, and I guess I started getting up in the mornings, and I'd go to the toilet, and the um, the urine flow wasn't what it used to be, started to really sort of slow down, and I thought, what's, what's going on here, and that happened for quite a few weeks. It was okay sort of during the day, but um, of a night and in the morning, it just, for some reason, it just seemed to slow down. And uh, it was annoying more than anything else. And I thought, look, I'll just go and get this checked out. And I had no other, there's no other sort of symptoms as such for me. So I went and got that checked out and had a PSA check uh, that uh, you get done and it was a bit high. It wasn't way, way, way high, but it was high. And my doctor said, look, okay, we'll just um, go and get another one just to make sure it's uh, consistent type of thing. Had that done and it was, again, it was a six was my was my reading on the PSA there. And uh, she said, look, we'll, we'll get you to have a, uh, I always forget the word, the word of this thing, but it's, um, they put the little thing on your tummy there and what's it called again? It's uh, the women have when having babies, the ultrasound. Oh yes, yes. So that's what I was trying, I always forget that word. Yeah. Uh, went and had the ultrasound and came back and said, look, yeah, look, your prostate is enlarged. Uh, so we will 
uh, I'll send you off, give you a referral to a uh, urologist. So I went and saw the urologist. Uh, he said the best way to check it is to have a biopsy, which I wasn't that keen on, but uh, had that. And then uh, a week or so later, I was, I was actually just, I'd gone away uh, for 10 weeks on a secondment with my job, which was in immigration. Um, I was sort of looking after the de uh, detention centres around Australia here, and I was heading off to Western, Western Australia for 10 weeks. And then I got the call on my first the day I arrived. So I was awake, going to be away from my partner for 10 weeks. I was away from home for 10 weeks. And I got this call on the first day I was there. And uh, the doctor said, yeah, look, i um, got some bad news. Uh, your prostate, it's, uh, it's got 5% cancer in it. And, um, and again, I guess for most people that would really shock them. They'd be sort of, uh, but for me, I, I had an inkling that something wasn't quite right. And I wasn't sure what it was, but I figured, okay, well, maybe that's what it is. But I guess for me, my mind just instantly went to like a steel trap and said, okay, it's not, it's not going to stay there. It's, it's not hanging around. It's five percent. It's going to go. It's going to leave. It's a trespasser, basically, in my body. And that, that was my mindset right from the start, which right. I think certainly helped me. And, um, and from there, I, um, I guess if I, if I was at home. I may have gone back to see my doctor and, or the urologist and um, he wanted to sort of have it cut out and all that kind of thing. He said, look, you're still young, we'll have it cut out and you'll be fine, blah, blah, blah. But fortunately, I was away and uh, had to sort of tell my partner. So she had 10 weeks on her own and here I am with this, you know, this diagnosis. So it wasn't good for her either, but uh, it was good in a way that we did lots of research, uh, looked at all the alternatives and... Um, and when I came back, we took the alternative route, basically, and uh, that's how it sort of all started for me. Yeah. Right. yeah so each of those steps that you talked about, I, I want to sort of um, expand on in, in the next uh, couple of uh, 15, 20 minutes or so. Um, so going, going back to the original symptoms for the, for the guys that are watching this, um, so again, similar to me, you had that uh, weak uh, urine flow, yep. um, intermittent urine flow. I remember uh, the, the there were two turning points for me. The one was I was back in the UK because I'm in uh, Tokyo Real, of course, I'm in Japan. I was back in the UK and went out and had about five or six pints of beer, which is rare. I don't do that anymore. You know, I drink every day over here, but I don't drink that quantity. And I, I woke up in the middle of the night busting for a pee. So I go to the toilet. I'm standing over the toilet and I say, okay, whoa, here, let's let it out nothing would come out and it's just that hot and, and at that point I thought there's something wrong here my bladder is full I am busting and I cannot get it out All right <laughs> that was one point and then a few days later I was back at my sister's house where I was staying and we were chatting and I said I'm gonna go to the toilet <laughs> and, uh, I was I went to the toilet and uh, I came back in the lounge my sister said to me do you always pee like that I said what do you what are you doing listening to me pee? <laughs> she said, like, well, there's no music. I just couldn't help hearing it. But you were peeing in, 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 in intermittently, you know, stop, start, stop, start. And, and that sounds like a prostate problem, she said to me. And I thought, well, yeah, right. it's been like that for a while, I said, but I've never, I just thought, oh, I'm getting older. That's the way it is, you know, no big deal. And mm -hmm. those combination of things and sort of triggered it for me. Um, other things like dribbling a little bit before and after urinating are sort of symptoms as well, apparently. Getting up at mm. night and going, having to go to the toilet many times because you can't empty mm. your bladder in one go uh, yeah. because of the pressure on it uh, from the enlarged prostate. Um, I think those are most of the symptoms that guys want to look out for, yeah? Have I missed anything? Or? Yeah, no, look, you're right. And, yeah. and certainly, certainly for me... Um I never had that real, like going to the toilet, you know, five or six time, times every night. I didn't quite get that far, which is probably a good thing, I guess. But, um, but certainly my brother had that, that issue and his prostate was greatly enlarged. Uh, he never had cancer in it, but um, it was enlarged to the extent he had to have a, uh, I can't think of the name, what they call it now, but he had to have the whole, like a rebore. It's called a rebore, I think it is. Right. And yeah. had to have the whole thing rebored, and I thought, oh, my God. So, um, so he had that sort of issue. In fact, he had he had it so bad that he had to go to hospital at one stage because he just he'd been to the football, had quite a few drinks, like you were saying yourself there, 
quite a few cans of beer or stubbies of beer, whatever he had, and um, he, he couldn't go to the toilet. He had to go to the doctor and have a, um, a little um, tube put in or whatever, and, uh, and he was in a pretty bad way, but uh, he sort of got through that through this rebore thing. But certainly, yeah, that's, they're the sort of major symptoms that I'm aware of. And um, yeah. again, it's, it's something that people or men can actually live with as long as it's sort of controlled, basically, which I'll get into a bit later, I guess. But yes. um, yeah. It's, it's the most common, certainly in Australia, the most common male cancer that you can get is, is prostate cancer. And um, It's interesting yeah, what you say, actually, because uh, um, I was reading that uh, if you have, if it is cancerous, often um, those symptoms we talked about, about, that we just talked about, going to the toilet and urine flow, etc., the cancer doesn't actually affect those till the cancer is quite advanced. Right, which is yeah. and, and something I didn't realize again. So what, if it's the cancer that's causing that, by that stage the cancer is quite advanced. Whereas I, I was having those um, symptoms from the very beginning, um, didn't know whether it was cancerous or not. Um, so having, having those symptoms, this is another point we can talk about in, in, a, in a minute, it doesn't mean that you, you have cancer. Because this is a bit oh, of a, exactly, a yeah. panic thing, isn't it, Kevin? You know, yeah. things are going wrong. You think people say prostate, prostate. Oh, you may have prostate cancer. When someone says that to you, that's a, a scary phrase, you know, that somebody mm. says to you. And again, to, the purpose of you and I chatting today is to sort of, so, sort of elip, um, ease people's worries that, you know, uh, when people have, um, for example, a high PSA score, which we'll talk about in a moment, three out of four guys do not have cancer. Mm. Um, the higher the score, the more likely it is that you have it. But actually, three out of four don't have it. So we don't want to sort of um, st sort, sort of panic monger people here. We want to do the opposite. We want to calm people down and say, hey, just hang mm. on a minute, because this is pretty, pretty much a normal thing for guys over 40 and 50, and it doesn't mean yeah. that you have cancer, yeah? Yeah, and, and also a very important thing to recognise is the fact that most men, and I'm not, not sure of the exact percentage, but most men over the age of 70 who have an autopsy will have some degree of cancer in their prostate without even knowing it. Yes. Well, obviously they're, they're dead, but um, but as, as they get older, a lot of men don't even realise it, and you, you can live with it. So, um, And I know there's, there's a lot of, um, I mean, doctors are out there to do a job, Doctors are out there to get paid, they make money by what they do. But I think a lot of the talk about prostate is very negative and it, it shouldn't be because um, it is something that, um, how can I put it without being too controversial, but certainly um, having prostate cancer is not a death sentence, put it that way. It is something that uh, certainly if it's, you know, if it, if it gets diagnosed early enough, you can certainly deal with it. And the way I dealt with it was a whole different story. That was just doing it through natural means, and it certainly worked for me. But if you um, if you don't have any symptoms, a lot of people don't have, have symptoms. And as I say, when they die in their 70s or 80s, there is some sort of uh, an amount of uh, cancer in their prostate. Yes. So it's not something that you think, oh, I've got prostate cancer, I'm going to die. That's, that's just totally wrong. And uh, it can be fixed up by the medical profession or it can be fixed up, certainly in my experience, uh, just through um, a plant-based diet, basically. So, uh, yeah. so look, you're definitely right. It's not something to be frightened of, even though when you're told you have it, the natural reaction is to be scared. But it certainly is something that um, it can be healed very quickly. And if you look at it the right way, and as I say, there are, there are two paths to go down with this whole thing, and that's the uh, go and see your doctor and just do what he says, or do what I did and just um, go the alternative route, basically. So, yeah. yeah and, we, and we're going to get into those in more detail. Um, so, you, your story is a, a very inspiring story, and we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit later. Maybe if I start with what, what I did, I, I just went to my doctor when I came back to Japan, um, just so the other guys can be aware of this, and he he did a he did a physical test first of all to feel the actual yeah. prostate, um, um, which initially is a bit sort of like shocking. Oh, okay, right, okay. And he said, "Yep, that's that's big." 
oh, okay, right, that's big. Mm -hmm. um, then they, they have the, the, the scans and they measure it and they can see it on mm -hmm. the screen and he said, yes, it's big. Um, but, uh, and then you have the PSA test. Now the PSA test, the PSA um, is all we need to remember, but it stands for uh, prostate specific antigen, which is a protein, as long as the guys remember PSA test. And um, there is no actual normal level for it, I believe that, but between four, below 4.0 is considered normal, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so below 4.0. But even if you have an elevated PSA score, it does not mean that you have cancer, because there are various reasons you may have a prostate infection, there are other, other reasons mm. why it could be elevated. Mm. Um, so, Absolutely. And then, it, it ended up that, that I had uh, what they call BPH. Again, I'll get the terminology right by referring to my notes. Benign prostatic hypertrophy. All we need to remember is BPH or mm. prostatitis. Um, and benign meaning it's not cancerous, which was a big relief for me, of course. Um, and of course, I have to go back for regular checks to make sure it's okay. But BPH, again, is an enlarged prostate, and as you just said, is very common um, with guys over 40, 50, and by the time you get to 70, 80, as, as again you just said, probably 90% of us guys are going to have mm. an enlarged, quite an, quite an enlarged prostate by that age, mm. and probably with a bit of cancer in it, but it doesn't mean mm. it can harm you in any way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And exactly. having an enlarged prostate doesn't, doesn't mean that it's cancerous. As, mm. as in my case. There's no actually yep. no correlation between having uh, a large prostate and cancer. You could have a normal sized prostate and it can be cancerous. Again, yep. an important point for, for, for our mm. viewers to understand that, yeah? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, so your PSA score, that was six, was it six did you say? Six, yeah. Yeah, and that resulted in a diagnosis of 5% cancer. Mm. So, the treatment options, let's talk a little bit about treatment options. Um, so, you went to your doctor, and what did he offer you? Yeah, I went to the, the uh, urologist, as they call him over here, mm. um, and he said, look, uh, we can, well, he only gave me one option, basically. <laughs> he said, look, well, he gave me two, but uh, he said, look, we well, just leave it and um, just do like a watch every, every six months. They have a name for that, but I can't remember the name now. Um, or we can go in now and have it cut out. I'll explain a little how that, let me explain how that all works and all that kind of thing. He said, look, you're still young, so it's not going to affect you too much. And, um, but he did say, look, there is a lot of, there's a lot of nerves down there and uh, sometimes, you know, things can happen. Just be aware of that. And um, I thought, oh, okay, that's interesting. So anyway... And like he explained all this over the phone to me because I was away. So, um, and as, as I said, it just gave me the opportunity to to do my own research. But certainly he gave me those two options. We could just leave it. He said, but my advice would be to have it cut out because you're still young. Um, or we can just leave it and just do a watch and every six months come in for it and have another um, biopsy, which I didn't want to do anyway. Yeah, you talked to um, me before about not having a biopsy. Is it, it sort of triggers things off, possibly. Yeah, look, in, and again, all the, I mean, the stuff that I'll say today is all my opinion and my experience, basically. Yeah. So I'm not we should make that point. Yeah, neither of us yeah. are professionals. We're not medical professionals. Yeah. This is purely our our own opinion from our own experiences in life. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. And for me, and again, I've got this advice from a, my sort of health guru, Don Tolman, and um, and he says what they. And what they do is they, they stick this thing, it's like a little gun that goes inside your bottom there and um, they shoot it into your prostate. It has all these little needles, basically. And what he says is that actually can aggravate, if you had got cancer, it can aggravate it. And, uh, you know, this jabbing the thing with needles and drawing some of it out and all that kind of thing. And for me, that, that, makes, that makes sense because um, if you're going to do that to any sort of injury, it's going to... I think sort of make it worse. So I had the one biopsy, and that's that's certainly it for me. I don't intend on having any more. Um, so I had that done, and that's how they got their results. But certainly for me, 
um, and again, we'll go into this later, I guess, I've, I just ate my way to health pretty much, I guess, ate and drank my way to health rather than um, have to go through the, um, you know, all the, the chemo and the radiation and all that, having it cut out and... Um, Did he give you a chemo option before the operation? Um, he didn't actually, that wasn't actually mentioned as such, but he sort of hinted that that's, that may happen once you've had, once you've had it taken out, right. just to, just to make sure it's all gone around that area. Yeah. Uh, we can do some radiation and some chemo type stuff. And, mm. and I thought, well, again, that's just not, I just don't want to do that because I guess with my research of what I've seen about chemo, yes, it does kill cancer cells, but it also kills good cells around it making your immune system a lot less uh, active and pretty much killing it. And um, again, just my experience, but I, I don't want to go down that path and it's my choice to say, no, I'd rather just heal myself through natural yeah. means. So let's but go the, back to the operation. The biopsy, no, I'm, yeah. I'm not, not, a, not a big fan. No. Right, okay, so that was the biopsy. Going back to the operation, now a good friend of mine, he's a, he's a urologist, he's a, he, he's a surgeon. So he actually, um, he uses the Da Vinci uh, robotic machine to um, cut out your prostate. Um, and he, he actually, he brought, uh, we went out a couple of months ago and he brought his uh, iPad along with him and showed me a, a, a video of him doing an operation. Absolutely amazing, incredible, mm. of, of him and then just cutting and pulling out the prostate and dropping it in a bag and taking it out of the body. But yeah, right. we talked a lot about it and... Um, the the it's a complicated operation that can have uh, m there are massive repercussions because of it yeah mm. well there certainly can be yeah yeah because yeah. it's 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 located uh, the the prostate gets so big it puts pressure on on the urethra yeah which causes your problems and it's very close to the bladder and there's all these nerve endings mm. which affect our sexual function. So Absolutely. there are two types, um, basically two types of operations that he was telling me that you can have. One being I can do a partial, um, uh, I can be very careful how I take it out and not damage too many nerves so you can still have uh, sexual relations after or we can just cut everything around it, take it out and you can say goodbye to your sex life. And he told me a sort of, a funny story if there is a funny story involved in something like this he said a lot of the guys of our age in their 50s are in, come into they're laying in the bed in the hospital uh, with their wives and he says to them well uh, have you thought about it what what kind of operation would you like and the wife pipes up and says just just cut it all out don't worry about how you do it he doesn't need it anymore and <laughs> and the guy is looking at the doctor winking Sort of saying, don't you dare cut it all out because my girlfriend won't be uh, very happy, <laughs> he, even though my wife doesn't know. Because <laughs> uh, it was just a funny, funny uh, little story that he was telling me associated uh, with it. You know, the wife's saying, just get it out, he doesn't need it anymore. Uh, know, I need it with other people. <laughs> but yeah, because, and, and you know, it, that's, that's it. It can have a massive effect on your, your sexual function, which in, 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 uh, in, in return, can have a massive effect on your your um, uh, the, the the man's um, uh, libido. Yeah, our our feeling to, to be a man. You know. Oh, exactly. Yeah. It, 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 like your, your whole self esteem, and uh, as you can imagine, I, I get a lot of people sort of asking me questions. I get emails and uh, people on Facebook asking about um, that kind of thing, and uh, I've had numerous people, uh, numerous wives actually. Who have contacted me and said, "Look, we we wish you we wish we had have known your story before my husband had his prostate removed because his self esteem is just almost zero, and it's really he was a fun loving guy and now he's just this guy who just sits at home and really uh, is quite depressed. So it can have a massive sort of effect on you. So it's very important that you um, you think about what you're going to have done because it can affect you down the track un undoubtedly. And uh, like I said, I've had lots and lots of women who have actually contacted me and said, "Look." You know, as I say, we wish we had known because um, poor old John or Jack or whatever, it has really affected him. So yes. that's just interesting, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I mean, I, I've been saying for the guys watching this video, for the guys, but actually for the women as well, because we all have partners mm. or wives, and it's an, it's an mm. important part of your relationship, isn't it? 
Mm. And when uh, when you when you're only fifty, uh, even sixty, I mean, you got a you got a lot of a uh, lot of loving ahead of you, you know. So oh, exactly, yeah. Um, yeah. It, yeah. So it is a difficult decision, um, uh, which which you know a lot of people are, are not aware of as well. Um, so okay, uh, so we talked about the operation um, and, and the possibility of needing chemo. After it, and th those are both horrible options. But if they mm. save your life, they could be an option. Yeah? Um, mm. For for my for my problem, which as I say was non-cancerous, so far touch wood. Um, medicine, I have medicine, yeah, and the medicine I have just makes it very easy for me to go to the toilet. Makes my um, my flow very smooth, um, which which is useful. Mm. But I know that you, you've done a lot of research, a lot of work, and you are actually now working on ways of replacing the medicine with, with foods and other methods. So perhaps we could sort of move into that a little bit mm. about your Dan Tolman story and what's good for, for improving the, the urine flow and getting off the medicine. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. And, um, and, and let's, let's talk about your self-healing as well, because you, you decided not to go for the operation yet. And you decided to self-heal. Let's talk about that story because it's a great story. Yeah, sure. Um, and also, just to make it very clear that um, anybody who's out there who's sort of sitting on the fence, I mean, I don't sort of advocate either way. I mean, it's totally your choice. Like when you're told you've got cancer, um, it's a frightening thing. So people who want to go the medical way, that's that's totally fine in my eyes. It's I just want to make that sort of perfectly clear. And um, but my choice was yes, as you said, to go the, the different way. And um, so we did this research, and my actually my partner Joy found um, this Don Tolman guy, and um, I'd, I'd heard of him, but didn't know a lot about him. And uh, when I got back from my ten weeks off, we went and saw him. He did a seminar, and he was just amazing. And uh, I went to his three day event, and we had a good chat about everything. And um, he put me on this particular protocol. Um, and he, actually one of the first things he said to me, if you had a biopsy? And I said, yeah. And he said, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> but, uh, he's, he, like, he's against anything that sort of um, intrudes inside your body, basically, that's not natural. Um, so he put me on this particular protocol, which was a, uh, certainly for breakfast, it was a bowl of rolled oats. And uh, you would get some flax seeds, the little things you get in the health shop, uh, put the flax seeds on top, sprinkle some of those on top, uh, squeeze a lemon over the top of those, uh, add some, a couple of drops of wheat germ oil, stick those in there, and then let that sit overnight, and in the morning, uh, boil a, boil your kettle, and stick the water over, stick, well, stick the water into the oats, um, and eat that. And I'd, I would actually add a banana because I'm, not, I'm a bit of a banana head, so I just love bananas. <laughs> so yeah. I'll put my banana in, the, in there as well. Um, he also recommended, um, you know, having uh, like a handful of Brazil nuts every day, right. uh, lots of broccoli, um, and he said stay on that and lots of like fruit and vegetables basically, um, and make them as raw as you possibly can. And he also recommended do that for two weeks, and then for two weeks after that, go on what is called a Kabbalah fast, which is a Kabbalah juice, which is carrots, apples, beetroot, and lemon. And I would also add the turmeric and the and some ginger to that little mix. So for two weeks, just drinking that and nothing else. And uh, but also he has a product called Pulse, which is like little dried fruits and nuts in a little 200 gram pack. So I was allowed to have uh, one of those a day, plus the juice, for two weeks. So I did that for two weeks. Yeah. And probably the, t the toughest thing I've ever done, actually. It was yeah. very tough. The, the first week I got through it okay. And I thought, oh my God, there's another week to go. But um, I got through it okay. And then after that, back on the on the uh, the rolled oats protocol and uh, just the, and, and lots of, Juices, lots of smoothies and all that kind of thing, and like non-dairy. He said to give up dairy for at least twelve months, give up meat for twelve months, which I did. Because they're all bad for the prostate, yeah. Uh, the dairy and the and the, and the red yeah. meat. 
Yeah. Yeah. And look, certainly for me, I, the dairy certainly is uh, something that, that uh, has no real good for the body. Like people talk about calcium, but you can get calcium from you know green vegetables. And uh, I don't. I think it's a, a big con by the dairy industry, but that's another story. Yeah. But um, but for me, yes, I cut out the dairy, cut out the meat. Which uh, I mean, and those two things have been proven over time that, that they can cause um, inflammation in your body, which in turn can cause cancer. So it's uh, it's a bit of a no-brainer for me. So I did that for twelve months, um, but after three months, in fact, less than three months, it was probably about six or seven weeks on the on the rolled oats and doing the two-week uh, Kabbalah fast. Uh, my urine was back to normal. It was just it was. As I told Don, it was flowing like a fire hose, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And so that really helped me. And um, like I guess I went through that 12 months and just felt fantastic. I was doing, I uh, ran a half marathon. Probably never been healthier, actually. And you're probably yeah. losing weight as well, <laughs> eating all that good stuff. Yeah, I lost, lost a little bit of weight, yeah. Yeah, yeah which was, um, I mean, I don't need to lose weight. I'm not an overweight person normally, but um, I'm just naturally, well, luckily, sort of fairly... Uh, slim anyway, but um, that lost a few kilos there, which was good. And like I say, just really, I probably now I'm probably the healthiest I've been in my entire life. And that was I started that back in 2012, that okay. the whole protocol there. And uh, and now I'm sort of um, I, I'll continue with that. I had that I had the porridge um, at least probably three times a week. I still have that, and then. Uh, just have lots of smoothies in the morning as well and lots of juices and lots of healthy stuff. And it, you, you, I still have, I'm not perfect, I still have the odd, uh, you know, I'll have a bit of chocolate or something or a bit of cake here and there. And uh, I mean, you have to sort of, you can't just you totally. you got to be human, haven't you? You've got to be human, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, um, but that certainly worked for me. And, and, and medi uh, medically, uh, the, the result of that, after how, 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 so after how many years you went back to the hospital, I guess you've been having regular checks, what what has been the the medical? Well, the, I haven't had sort of regular checks as such, but um, I, I, I do tend to, and again, this is just me. I do tend to steer clear of doctors. Yeah. Um, but my my PSA is uh, is sort of uh, one point eight or two somewhere around there, and uh, and the doctors I, I do go and see, which is very very rare. I haven't seen a doctor for probably three years now, yeah. to be totally honest. Um, and they just said, look, you're, you're normal, you're healthy, uh, your prostate is totally fine. Um, yeah, did just, they, did, just, did they, just keep doing what you're doing, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Did, you had an enlarged prostate, yeah, did you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So did they ever do a check after to see if it had reduced in size or not? Or? No. No, no. But, you, but you're no, feeling... I, I, Sorry? I was going to say, I'd, I had no intention of letting them even do that. So um, I, I, I could have had a little... The ultrasound, I guess, but for me, um, the, the urine hasn't been an issue since. It's flowing beautifully. I've got no issues down there, and, and the, you get to a stage. I did also a lot of meditation, which was very important. Because when you have something like this, it, it's really important that you um, you focus on not just your body, but also your mind and your spirit, basically. And uh, and the meditation has really helped as well. That mm -hmm. sort of um, I think if you just focus on your body, it's going to be a struggle. But if you're a meditator and you can really, um, you know, find that that inner peace inside you, yes. that is, that's that's also a big thing as well. And and when you do that, you really get to know your body. And I really know my body really well, I think, and uh, better than any doctor knows it. Yeah. And for me, certainly down there, I don't have any issues. It's, right. uh, it's every everything is functioning. Yeah, it was when I was twenty, basically. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm yeah. happy with that. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. And that's a great. It's a great self-healing story that you have there. And um, you know, I. Uh, it's what 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 you've been through. Actually, we both have this sort of same holistic approach to this situation. You have to take on a holistic approach. The body mm -hmm. and the mind basically are one. Yeah, they're not separate yeah. entities. And when you have these problems, you ha it becomes sort of like a. Uh, a lifestyle, a lifestyle change that you need. You need to manage your lifestyle differently. The way you, the way you eat, the way you drink, the, your stress levels. Your, your introducing meditation or other forms like yoga or understanding your mind and relaxation. It becomes a lifestyle thing, doesn't it? If you want to get healthy again. 
and you've oh, adopted absolutely. all that, yeah. and it's it, yeah. you know the the proof is in the results. It's it's it's. Uh, it's yeah, oh, look for sure, and I think, I mean, I I had two choices when I was told. I could have either um, really got totally stressed and um, resign myself to the fact that you know I could have chemo or something, I had it cut out, or and just totally had had that affect my whole life. Or I could have gone down the road, which I did, was um, say, right, this is not going to certainly it's not going to kill me, and it's just a trespasser in my body. And as soon as um, I can, it's just going to leave. It's going to it's going to be out of there. And um, so it's really important to have that, as you say, that that whole holistic lifestyle to to, to fight something like this. Because uh, if you haven't got that, it's going to be really hard. Because I, you know, your mind is your body, basically. And if you're thinking negative thoughts about what you've got inside your body, then that, that's just going to grow and grow and grow, in my opinion. Yeah. Whereas if you can be positive about it, accept it's there, but just, you know, do some meditation and just really see that sort of not being there anymore and seeing yourself as being healthy, then that's really going to help you. Yeah. And, I, and just, I, I agree with you. And I, and I believe, you know, what, what's happened to you has led, led you down a path where... Um, from a, a hobby and a business point of view, you've you started up these various platforms. Um, again, talk to me about about getting out of your comfort zone and then moving into uh, Chimetic Heels and how that's all developed and where you are now and the impact that you can have on other people. Um, because w we work together on Tokyo Real um, with you on this and. Uh, you're now a sort of resident guest and high performance coach on Tokyo Real, and you're helping a lot of people. Talk to me a little bit how your experiences has moved into what you're doing now. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so I guess certainly with um, and there's also a thing in my past there also that um, has shaped me as well, and that was uh, back in the 1989. I lost a daughter to SIDS, sudden yes. infant death syndrome, yeah. and uh, she was only five months of age. And I guess from there, from that sort of time, I've really, um, I guess my journey has been about sort of helping others who have been through similar kinds of um, circumstances. And I had a, I had a, I've still got a, a Facebook page that helps mothers who have lost a child, basically, and uh, that's still, that has about 12,000 people on there, which is um, not great because they've all lost a child, unfortunately, but um, it's, it's there to help them. And with the health experience that I've had, again, the same thing. I've, I think the best way to get yourself through it is to actually start helping other people. And that, yeah. that's going to help you. And that's how, um, I guess, getting your comfort zone started, um, helping people get out of their comfort zone and you know, stop you know, living a life where they're, they're a victim, basically. And then with the turmeric heels stuff, that... Um, Takes it even further and gets into the um, into the health. I mean, turmeric was a big part of my healing experience. Yes. I took a lot of turmeric. Um, Talk to me a little bit about turmeric. What what is turmeric? Uh, well, turmeric it's um it's an Asian spice, if you like. It's uh, it's a herb and it's um it's it's been around for about four thousand years. It's uh, it goes way way back to um, you know the ancient Chinese and the ancient Indians from you know. Like thousands of years ago, where they they used this stuff, um, this beautiful golden spice, uh, and it was a like a, an, an elixir back then. They used it to um, heal wounds. They used it to heal their body. And I guess in the last probably say five to ten years, it has it has come back again, and it's um, it's people are starting to realise the actual health benefits. It's uh, it's probably the world's best anti-inflammatory. Um, it's been proven uh, scientifically that it's, actually, it's more effective than any uh, anti-inflammation kind of medicine you can get, which is amazing. And, and that's really know, important, isn't it? Because all, even if we don't have any uh, like medical problems that we're talking about today, we all we all get up in the morning and our bodies creak and ache through sport that we've been doing or yeah. over overworking. Our joints are inflamed. And just for the average person, it's a, it's a great it's a great product, yeah, great food. Yeah, oh, absolutely, and it's um, and like I say, yeah, we we all get inflammation of some kind, and inflammation is what causes most diseases. Your your cells become your body becomes inflamed. Your cells can't like Alzheimer's. There's now 
massive research being done by the medical profession, by scientists, that is proving that uh, turmeric can really help with those with Alzheimer's yeah. and also help prevent it. Right. Because Alzheimer's is, is called by it's caused by inflammation of the cells, and uh, and turmeric can really help sort of break that down. So it's it's a fascinating food, something that I've um, well I've got a website about it now. So it's uh, which is all about sort of helping uh, helping people discover turmeric, uh, and not just turmeric, but also like other also I talk about other stuff on there as well, like the fasting and that kind of thing, and. Um, just and also meditation is also on there, and it's all about helping people have that, as we spoke about before, that holistic lifestyle balance, and yeah. they're looking after the body, you know, the mind and the spirit, which is really really important. So all these things that we talked about today, about how we can, uh, with, with regard to the prostate, uh, how we can sort of help ourselves to heal ourselves, a lot of that stuff is on on your website, yeah. Um, about the best foods yeah. to eat, the best recipes. How to make the how to how to make the the, the recipes and the, that that you have it's all on there yeah so it's a great place a great yeah. resource for people to go to yeah and look it's only about probably six months old the website so there's there's more stuff coming but certainly there's a lot of, a lot of things on there there's um, the first blog was about my healing journey with the prostate mm. uh, which has had lots and lots of uh, comments on there. Um, but yeah, it's all about um, the different types of uh, foods you can make. I'm also now getting into, very shortly, is uh, a thing called golden paste, which is basically turmeric paste. And you make that with turmeric, coconut oil, uh, black pepper and water, basically. Right. And you actually you cook the, uh, the turmeric in a, in, a, in a pot and then add the uh, oil and the black pepper. And, uh, and the paste is really uh, an amazing as well because the, the black pepper and the coconut oil help to absorb the turmeric into the blood because if you're having it just raw or just the powder it does need some coconut oil and some black pepper yeah. the, the black pepper contains a, a substance called uh, piperine which really helps the turmeric to absorb into your blood otherwise it just goes straight through you right, yeah, so that's, that's a little point, inter interesting little fact there and um, so yeah I'm getting onto making some of that, I'm going to actually start selling that as well at some stage uh, very soon as well. I'm going to make some golden paste and sell it online because I think it's important that people get a hold of that because that's a really, it's a really good resource and it's you just grab a little teaspoon, put it in your juice or your smoothie or your soup or your stew and it's going to help you and um, yeah. turmeric's got to, you know, and I think a big thing that I want to do also Ian, is to really start helping the elderly who all have all got aches and pains and inflammation and that kind of thing and uh, some of them of course have never heard of turmeric so it's time to sort of enlighten them and perhaps help them as well. Yeah, yeah. And every time we have a curry it's it's laid, ladled with it, isn't it? It's, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've been eating Indian curries all my life and never realised them. And then my, yeah. mate, my mate runs an Indian restaurant so I was up there last week and I said, hey, talk to me about this turmeric, I said. and uh, and. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, "Well, of course, yeah. We've been, you know, we've been into it for years in India, and and, and I said, well, well, yeah. Now it's all coming together and making sense." Yeah, you know? yeah exactly. That's no, why you're so great... kinky, I said. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, oh, look, it's a great thing, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. It really and is, and on uh... and on your uh, on your website, you you set tasks for your members, yeah, um, weekly tasks. What kind of tasks? Yeah, we've got. Um, we did an intermittent fast for a month. That was, I think. It was March or April, I think. So every week, um, everyone uh, for the first two days of the week, they just drank juice between um, for bre between breakfast and lunch, and then at dinner time you can have your or after lunch even you can start eating again. So intermittent fasting is a very good thing yeah. uh, for detoxing the body, healing the body. Um, we've just done a three-day juice fast. Which was fantastic. It's um, I, I often do seven-day juice fasts at the change of each each season, just to get the body sort of uh, give it a bit of a reboot. Uh, but a three-day fast is a great little detox for yourself. Uh, coming up, we're going to be doing just a, a one-day smoothie fast because a lot of people haven't quite made that step to the you know three days or more sort of with fasting, and at least with a smoothie fast, uh, like a non-dairy smoothie fast. Uh, it's it's doable for people just to give, give them that, that experience, just filling their body up with some nice healthy stuff, and um, so things like that. Yeah, yeah, just to get them out there and um, you know get them taking photos of them using turmeric, all those 
all those kinds of things. Just getting people involved, that's really yeah. important. Yeah. And um, we're, st we're kicking off the Tokyo Real Academy on June the 1st, in a few days, and you're going to be setting a task for our Academy members, I, I believe. So we'll do a separate video on yeah. that. Um, yeah, sure. Yes, yeah. I look forward to that. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. That'll well, be good. I'll get them uh, out of their comfort zone, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, I've been I have been trying your intermittent fasts uh, for the last couple of weeks, and that's going well. And I've been uh, using the Pure Thrive, which I got from you, yep. um, uh, and been ha taking that every day. So it's starting to get easier to get out of out of, out of bed in the mornings now after all the training. I do, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, listen, and well done on your uh, surfing on the weekend. I believe you got a uh, you came second in. Uh, some surfing event over there, uh, which is yeah, fantastic. Yeah, NSA, yeah. which is the uh, All Japan Championships qualifying round. So uh, it was quite a big event. Wow. So I'm pretty, yeah, pretty pleased. I mean, you know, it's sort of like I was really pleased to get second, but it would have been nice to be champion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're that yeah. close, you sort, you know. But, uh, that's great, mate. You're out there, you're doing it. So that's a, that's well, a really good thing. My division is over 40s, master class. Um, so um, I've got like 15 years on, on most of them. So again, to beat all the youngsters in the yeah. 40s was quite satisfying. To kick That's their right. asses, you know. <laughs> but uh, good stuff, mate. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, anyway, what what you're doing on Chimeric Heels, I think it, it's it's wonderful that you help trying to help so many people. It's a great resource to go to. And when, when I put this video up, I'm going to put all your links in the description boxes in YouTube and on Facebook so people can find you easy. They can go there. They can, they can get on board with you and join what you're doing and all help each other. Um, Fantastic. Thank so, you yeah, I mean, thanks Great. today for, for, for sharing your stories. I hope what we've talked about with regard to prostate has been helpful for the guys and, and, and the girls out there, the wives and the, and the, and the, the, the you know, girlfriends and um, people will have learned something from this and they can come back to us at any time and ask us questions um, yeah, and as we say we're not yeah. medical professionals but we've been through this it's our opinions and we hope it helps people yeah 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 for yeah. sure and, and thank you for the opportunity to sort of get that out there because um, there are thousands probably millions of men out there that need to sort of hear that and uh, that they need to know that it's not the end of the world that there is hope out there and uh, but it is a it's a body mind thing you you have to work that, otherwise yeah. uh, you're going to struggle basically. So, and, sure. and Tokyo Real doing a fantastic job. Um, looking forward to getting stuck into the academy and meeting a few more people there and getting some um, yeah, a bit of coaching happening with them for sure. Yeah, yeah well, we're just just taking off and about to launch yeah. the academy on June the first, so it's all starting to happen. And uh, yeah, Great okay, stuff. well look, we'll we'll wrap it up there. Um, and. Uh, Thank you again for coming on. We're going to see a lot more of you, I hope. And, uh, Absolutely, mate. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going anywhere, by the way. <laughs> right. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll, we'll, we'll, I'll come back to you with that uh, task video, and we'll, we'll get that sorted. Terrific. All right. All right. Appreciate it, mate. Thank you All very right. much for having me. Thanks, Kevin. All the best. No worries.